This is a place that's haunted. He was telling us some ghost stories that were pretty scary. A lot passed here. A lot of people died here. We're in Isla Coiba. We made it through the canal. We came straight over to Isla Coiba. It was, a, it was a long sail and I think I might have lost my transmission on the way. In today's episode, we go island hopping as we sail through the beautiful Pearl Islands. We explore the infamous haunted prison on Coiba Island. Get towed to Isla Secas after we lose our transmission. And we put up our new pirate spinnaker in Boca Chica. Before learning about the atrocities that took place in Coiba Island prison, a quick stop off in paradise. Good morning, we are in Isla Perlas. It's beautiful here, you know, way different and nice. <laughs> There's an abandoned prison here. I want to take some drone shots from like in the prison. Like fly the drone around the prison. It'll be, it'll be cool. It'll be fun. Let's go check out the prison. Go this way. Coiba Island Prison, also known as La Coiba, was a notorious penal colony on Coiba Island in Panama. For much of its history, it served as a remote isolated maximum security prison. Oh, they walled up the, the bars. You can't see out. Oh, that's horrible. Established in 1919, the prison was known for its harsh and brutal conditions, housing some of Panama's most dangerous criminals. This is solitary confinement on the backside. Really dangerous, guys, go back here. Coiba Island's dense tropical forests and its distance from the mainland made it an ideal location for such a facility, as it was very difficult for inmates to escape. The prison's dark history includes stories of abuse, forced labor, and inhumane treatment of prisoners. He just told us that there's 20 to 30 people per cell in here, and they can't see the beach. Oh my god, that would be horrible. 30 people in here? Ugh. In 2004, due to mounting international pressure and concerns about human rights violations, the Panamanian government closed Coiba Island for prison, and the island itself was later declared a national park. And this jail would be a really horrible place to be stuck because you can hear the water. You're in paradise. You can see the beach, and you're stuck behind bars. Today, it stands as a protected UNESCO World Heritage Site known for its unique biodiversity, pristine beaches, and stark contrast to its once infamous past as a penal colony. This is a place that's haunted. He was telling us some ghost stories that were pretty scary. A lot passed here. A lot of people died here. Coiba Island Prison has gained a reputation for being haunted due to its dark history and the harsh conditions prisoners endured there. Accounts of former inmates and guards reporting sightings of ghostly figures and apparitions on the island. These spirits are said to be the restless souls of those who've suffered and died within the prison's concrete walls. 
People who have ventured onto Koiba, including ourselves, have also described an overwhelming sense of unease or being watched. This discomfort is often attributed to the prison's sinister history. Gracias, chicos, por todo. Okay. Mm -hmm. These guys are awesome. They gave us a tour of the whole island. They Did gave us a problem? bunch of stories. We got stories about ghosts. This was cool, man. Thank you very much, guys. Okay, I'm setting the steering wheel in the center because we're about to get towed. So locking in the center. <laughs> the guy we're buddy boating with, his name is Richard. He's a Kiwi. We'll let him slide on that fact because he's such a nice guy. He offered to give us a tow the 30 miles to Isla Secas. Uh, we don't have forward anymore. There's nothing. Just It'll go into reverse. I can put it in reverse. But as soon as I try forward, it's, it's stuck. That means that our transmission is gone. Uh, there might be a way for us to save it once we get to Boca Chica by putting mineral spirits in it and running it in, in reverse for a little while, cleaning it out, deglazing the clutches, and then putting ATF into it, and, and we might get a little more, more, more use out of it. But for now, it's done. So he's going to at least tow us out of this bay. It looks like there's some wind out here. Let me show you how we've flaked out all the lines for the tow. Okay, so these are all the lines we're using for the tow. It starts with the green line. It's got a bridle that goes to our boat and then a uh, um, bowline on a bite in the center. And then it goes to the white line and then it goes to the blue line. The blue line is gonna go out to him. I'm gonna get in the dinghy and I'm gonna bring him these lines. I need you to make sure these come out okay. Yeah, all right. Let me show you guys how to tie a proper bowline. So if you're going to be in a towing situation, you're gonna, you have to use a bowline. You, you don't want to use a bowline, but if you have to, you make the tail really, really long. And then when you, when you tie it up, you can tie a hitch here. See? Tie a hitch. And then tie another hitch. Lock it in. Another lock. Okay. Those knots get tight. Okay, so this is working out really good. We've got about three boat lengths, about 150 feet, give or take, between the boats, which is right where we want it. I tried to have 200, but we've doubled up a couple of my lines. But right, we've got a bridle going to his boat, coming back, a bridle going to our boat, and everything's looking pretty sweet. The only problem is these lines are all my old lines, so if they part, we're going to have to run back and turn the wheel so we don't collide with it. Well, we made it. Uh, sailed onto anchor. This is a beautiful spot to sail onto anchor to. It's nice and big and open. There's an island here. This island is the number one resort in Central America, I guess. Uh, it's judging that. Uh, he's over there. He arrived a little before we did, and uh, we're gonna go give him his dinghy back, and because we were towing his dinghy along the way, because he was towing us instead of his dinghy. And uh, yeah, about halfway through the wind picked up and we were able to sail the rest of the way. It was beautiful. Got some drone shots. Thanks a lot, man. Really appreciate that. Give me give me some give me some skin. Good good kickstart. Really appreciate that, bro. Yeah. At a certain point we weren't even really I mean we weren't even tied together anymore. We were just sailing both together. Yeah. Like like really freaking close. What I really liked is the fact that we were tied together and we were both sailing. Yeah, and that was cool. Yeah, that was like, yeah, yeah. We were keeping up to you. That was a first. You were. That was exciting. You were. This is going to be one of those jobs, man. One of those big ones. Hopefully they'll just slide out after I get all these bolts off of it. That'd be nice. Okay, 
this is the transmission. You can see it's leaking some oil and it's super dirty. I'm pretty sure that all this dirty is from this thing. This is called the dampener plate. It dampens, um, it does what, just what it says, just what its name is. It dampens the effect of, of um, switching gears on the gearbox. And what it is, is it's two plates and this one has a really hard plastic interior. You can see it here, I'll show you, let's see that. That is not supposed to be sticking out. This, this piece is busted. You can see how the gears inside here are super messed up. See the gears in there? They're not supposed to be touching. They're, they're like, they're super fucked up. So this thing is dead. I've got another one right here. This is a slightly different style. This one's got springs, so it probably won't last as long, but that one lasted 30 years. So I'm, I'm figuring this one will last for, for at least, you know, a few. So that one is the same bolt pattern, same spline pattern for the, for the um, thing. It fits right on the new gearbox, which is right here. <laughs> Thanks, man. Okay, we're all done. Um, it's just leaking a little bit of water out of the cooler. Just, uh, I, I think it's just from the hose. I think I need a new piece of hose and I don't have any inch and a quarter hose right now. So it's just gonna have to stay that way. We'll close the valve when we're not using the engine, open the valve when we're using it. And then when we start it, it's gonna suck and it's not gonna leak. Um, so what, right now, look, we've got a new, a new starter here. This is the new starter. This is the new transmission. There's a new dampener plate inside the bell housing, and everything's back together. We're gonna start it. Yeah. Look at this stuff right here. This is my jib. This is my spinnaker. Thank you, Precision Sales. You're probably asking yourself, James, why do you look all crazy? It is freaking hot today, and I'm hiding. I'm hiding from the sun. We're gonna open these boxes up, and we're gonna see what kind of sales they are. We're gonna put the jib up, and we're gonna Look at the spinnaker, like just check it out because uh, I think it, there's no wind, so I don't want to actually put it up, but I'll try to like hoist it up and see it. I think you're gonna like it. Stay tuned, it's badass. What color do you think it is? <laughs> Why would you think that? It's because I paint my nails. I can't say. I can't say. <laughs> what color do you think the spinnaker is? No idea. Blue. So you got pink and you got blue. You want to put some money on it? Your last one's pink. <laughs> My last one was yellow. It looks pink. No, it was yellow for sure. Maybe I'm just going pink on the brain. No faith, no faith. No faith from the peanut gallery back here. <laughs> I, I think they're going to love it. You guys are too. Just, ch just stay tuned and check it out. There it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I fucking love it! <laughs> it's awesome! <laughs> that is so cool! Alright, look at that! <laughs> yeah! It looks so badass, car! Well done! Well done, Precision Sales! That is so awesome! Wow!